Praise the Lord. If God's in control, we'll just go along with the flow. Like, we're, we're, we're there. <laughs> we're, we're part of it. Like, well, from the word go, you know, like, if that's it's 2,000 people there from the churches of, of Toowoomba, they will remember that we were there at the beginning. You know what I mean? So, we, you know, we were there. And God called us into that because that's like, that's, that's something else we can think about too. Like, God called us to be there at the start of that. Like, He didn't bring us in at the end of it just to go and sit in the back corner and come and attend it. He brought us to be a part of it from the word go. So that's a, that's an honour from God. Well, that's a great privilege or honour from God to call us into that from the word go. Yeah. Awesome, eh? Yeah. And maybe boy didn't come, but I, you know. He's out of here. Yeah. 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 Okay, praise God. So, just going over a little bit from last week. These are only little, well, last week we shared a lot out of Nehemiah chapter 4. So these are only just little sentences or something out of verses 1, 2, and 3, and 4, maybe in Nehemiah. I will say another thing. That thing that Ed did me last night, I knew how to put it over the years and that, and click it onto me. I just never used one before, so I think not years use one. But that's the kind of thing that we, we, we're, we're endeavouring to buy soon in the future, hopefully, that, to go along with our PA system. That uh, There'll be two of them and two of these other ones that we pin on you in the kit that's 439 or something that I've looked at to buy already. So that's the kind of thing we're going into. Going into flying the aeroplane. <laughs> I just tell you this at the beginning. I don't know if you know Murray Campbell, but I was on me, <laughs> I was on me um, computer mucking around. And I had earphones for it because I used to talk like with John A. down, down in um, Brisbane. And I, and, I, and I put me, there was a plane flying over. And I quickly put me um, earphones on. I went, uh, Is that 7724? Is that you? You got a copy up there in the sky? 77? Two four, and he's looking at me, he's freaking out. <laughs> he, he thought I was talking to this aeroplane up there. <laughs> oh, Murray, eh? We don't forget Murray. That would just come from that one. Will they revive the stones? This is last week, remember? We can be the stones. Will they revive those stones that are worthless, that are no good? Will they get them going again? They're burnt, we're burnt out, we're burnt. They've done everything wrong. In life, will they will they revive the stones from the heap of rubbish? We come from the heap of rubbish. Stones that are burned. That's when they're rebuilding the wall. Nehemiah had the vision to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. And they were going to use the stones that had been fallen down in, in Sem Ballot and Jadot, Tobiah and, and this other fellow were laughing at him and mocking him and, and running him down and saying, oh, will they build the build the wall out of that old rubble, that rubbish stuff, will they build it back up again? <coughs> Whatever they build, if even a fox goes up on it, he will break down their strong wall. So that was in about Nehemiah 3. They were saying that, that the rubbish that they were going to use, even if a fox went up on it, it would break it down. It would break the wall down. And, and, we, and foxes, I've got a little bit here what foxes there for. They are not Eternal animals, so they hang around the dark, yeah. that are more active at night time than during the day. So they all like to hang around at night time. What hangs around the darkness? Spiritual darkness, demons, Satan. They like to hang around the darkness. They don't go out. They don't come to the light because their darkness will be exposed. Is what John three seventeen, I think, or twenty, about twenty, I think it is. Foxes. Uh, have holes that are a safe place to for them to sleep in. In the in the foxes are depicted as mischievous animals that can leave behind significant damage. 
what I got out last week was the foxes did a, and then in, in the Song of Solomon's 215, it spoke, spoke about the small foxes spoil the vine. It was the small foxes. So last week I was, I was pointing at that. It's the small things in our life, the things that we, we don't take notice of, the little day to day that just brush over the sin and whatever, they can bring the wall crumbling down. They can run up and bring the wall crumbling down. And then I'd sit out of um, Samson, he went out and he caught 300 foxes and there's a job for us to do. He, he knew it was significant to go and catch the foxes and put them together tail by tail and then send them out into the enemy's fields to burn down their crops. So while we're, while we're building up the wall and the wall is, we had, we had a wall of forgiveness but it crumbled down when we got to the age of knowing the difference between right and wrong and all of a sudden unforgiveness stepped in there or this is my life that I'm talking about or bitterness or, or, or anger or rejection all of them things stepped in there when there, were, when, when there was love so the wall of hate I started just putting this wall of hate up again but I had to rebuild I had to get rid of the hate in my life and rebuild the build rebuild the wall of love again and rebuild the wall of forgiveness again and then, and then Satan's here in your ear and he's saying ha, 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 you'll do this so he sends out something little it mightn't be a big man, it mightn't be my father throwing a block of wood through the window that put anger and bitterness and unforgiveness and rejection and whatever in me as a, as a child. It might be that, but it'll be this little slide thing where none of it comes along. And he does something wrong with the son that I love, that there that, 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 that I'll listen to and, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll try my hardest not to verbally do anything to. But inwardly, it'll come and try and destroy that war that God has built up inside me of love and forgiveness. It'll come along them little foxes. It'll run onto the wall of love. It'll run onto the wall of forgiveness. And it'll try to bring it down, crush it down. It'll try to make it fall. So we need to be careful. We need to catch them when we see them. Because Samson, she, uh, he's just following Samson with the strength. Samson... He ran out and caught 300 of them. So we've got to learn that catching foxes, the little small foxes that spoil, spoil the vine, is significant for us to do in our life. They, I just got this. They hang around dark places. They are mischievous and leave behind a lot of damage. They, and they also symbolise worthlessness. Is that another thing that little fox is going to run up on the wall and say, oh, you're nothing, look at you, you're nothing, you can't do this, you can't do that. Trying to get that wall to come down with God's been building up inside of us. In the Bible, foxes remind us of obstacles in life that damage the harvest before it matures. So what God's done in our life, the Bible teaches us that foxes are the things that come and damage the the harvest before it comes to maturity. The fruit that God's trying to put in our life and God's growing in our life, the fox is going to come in, he's going to chew the vine and try to damage that before it comes to a full harvest in our own life. Foxes in the Bible are, are a warning to believers. So they in the Bible they're warning to us. Listen to this. Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O oh, Israel, your prophets are like foxes in the desert. The, 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 the verses follow each other. Woe to the false prophets. O oh, Israel, your, your foxes, they, 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 our prophets are like foxes. We've got to be careful of them. There's some there that are going to magnify and lift you up and God's going to exalt you and speak over your life. But there's other ones there that are going to try to confirm what they've been saying. They're going to force it to be confirmed so you can see that they're a prophet. Yeah. You've got to be careful. They're, they're, they're known as foxes in the desert. <coughs> foxes in the desert. Oh, Israel, your prophets are like foxes in the desert. Then Samson went out and caught 300 foxes and took torches and turned their foxes' tail to tail and put a torch between each tail and set them out to uh, burn down the crops of the enemy. And I've got to hear, how many foxes will I catch? They're there, how many am I going to catch? Am I just going to let them run up onto my wall and bring my wall down or am I going to start catching them? I'm 
I'm going to put a link for that. We're going to start that now. Well, well to be honest, you, we've got to we've got to give praise to God and everything. If something happens in our life, turn this testimony. If something happens in your life, praise God for that. Because if if you don't have something go on in your life, how are you ever going to really know how much you need Jesus? If your life's just on top of the mountain and you're just flowing through, doing it all by yourself, you're on top of the mountain, oh, I don't need Jesus as much as what they need Jesus. But if you come crumbling down here every now and then, you're going to realise where you're down here, I need Jesus to get back up here. And when I get back up here, I need him up there so I can stay up there. It's not all about me up there anymore. It's all about him. Amazing. So me and I, me and I and I, uh, four, sorry. Verse 9. Nevertheless, we made our prayer to our God. Because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. So, Father, I thank you for your word this morning, Almighty God. Let's pray for revelation, Father. Lord, revelation of your word, Almighty God. We need revelation, Father. Lord, you've got it in all little insight, little, little things inside your word, Father. We need to dig into it. <coughs> We get revelation of it, Father, so that we can we can have, have this word alive inside of us, Almighty God. Have it living inside of us, Father. Lord, we just pray for revelation, Almighty God, that you give us revelation of your word, Lord. We need revelation of your word, Father. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. I told them that little testimony there last night, really, that was just a little theme for last night. was... Um, Wolfie, uh, something about what was it? Uh, Wolfie, um, not from me, from Pastor Edgar. It was, um, I don't know, the battle anyway, the spiritual battle, the spiritual warfare battle. I don't know, I, I can't remember. That's what it was about, spiritual battle. And my, my feet there the other time, I know, but. And, and, and I couldn't swallow this, even the slide when my mouth was making it ache and that. And Lily was saying, oh, you've got to go to the doctor and get an x-ray on that. And I was saying, no, we'll just see how you wait for God to do a miracle. And then the next day, that was still just the, the same way. I said, and I, told, I said that night, go, on, go to the survey over there and get some, some um, strepsils and so get the ones that numb. So I could put them in there and numb me mouth and throat and that and the next day we woke up and it was still as bad <coughs> and then uh, we just started doing just started doing things on Saturday morning I cleaned the truck out and done a bit in the truck and that and, and still was going and then and I just I said we're going to fight this one Will and we got in the fight and they got preached I was going to nearly call preaching off last night because I how, how bad it was I couldn't do it I wouldn't have been able to do it but by the time we went there, or by the time Willie went to work, it was gone. And I hope I've got it now. You can hear it a little bit in my chest, kind of now, but <laughs> it's like God's healed me. That's the battle we've got to get into. We've got to get into that battle. We can submit, but we've got to get into the battle before we submit. Get into the battle. Nevertheless, we made our prayer to our God, and because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. I put this here so we can see how they overcome. They prayed. Nevertheless, we made our prayer to our God. The only way we can overcome, the only way that we can get through anything is by overcoming. I don't know if you know the parable in the Bible. When the, when, the, when the man had his friends come along, so he went over to his neighbour's place to ask him for bread, and he went over there and his neighbour turned him away and said, no, no, so you, you know what hour of the day it is, I haven't got any. So he went over and he knew that he needed it again, so he went over again and knocked on his neighbour's door, and this time the neighbour gave him what he was asking, not because he was his friend, not because he was his neighbour, but because of his persistence. Because of his persistence, he continued, he, he gave it to him. He continued to ask. So this is what we've got. And this is, why would God put that in the Bible to say it's because of persistence that you receive stuff? 
Or so we can only ask you once, God, and walk away and take it as an answer. You're not going to answer it? Or can we just persist and we persist and we persist, God, until you do what we want you to do, ask you to do? We keep praying and praying and praying. And this is like when we go on the catch the foxes. They might show up. I've still got stuff showing up in my life. But, the, but when I first started, when I first started, I used to pray to God and I'd say, God, how hopeless am I, God? I can't get this. I can't do this, God. Why do I go along so good for so long? Then all of a sudden, bang, I fail, God. Why? Why, does, why am I like this, God? I've got to keep persistent. Be persistent. Keep praying. Keep praying and asking God, help me, Lord. Help me. I can't do this on my own. If you stay up there, you'll never see how much you need God. But if you fall and you get down to this place, you'll know how much you need God. You'll know that God is my everything. I need him. I need you more. More than yesterday. I need you, Lord. More than anything. I need you more. But you know what a lot of people do? They fall and they run because of shame and guilt upon their life. Instead of seeing that this place, I need Jesus. I can't do it. This is a place I'm at that God's allowed me to come to this place because Satan's got to walk to him and say, look, Father, do you consider your servant Matthew down there? Look at him. You've got this wall of protection around him. Nothing can happen to him. This is a joke. Nothing can happen to him. What can I do to him? And God said, well, okay, I'll hand him over to you, but you can't, hand, you can't harm his flesh. You can do whatever you want to do to him, Satan, and you will see, this is what Satan said, does he love you for nothing because you've got this hedge of protection around him? And he said, and you will see, Satan, how much he loves me. Because when he gets to that place, he will realise that he needs me more. And more, and more. And that's what's going to get him back up on top of the hill again when he realises how much he needs me. You can do it, Satan. Because <laughs> I've got something good to bring out of your wicked weeds. Right? That's what God's saying. You can do it. I know. I trust him. Amen. We made our prayer to our God and and because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. So we don't pray just in the morning. We pray day and we pray night. We should continue to just that should be our deepest desire, the biggest thing, the gift, the biggest gift that God God showed me this. I went to the I went to the NRL Grand Final in two thousand and two. And I was sitting in there at that stadium, there was only 4,000 people there or something. And I was sitting there and I was having one-on-one -on -one conversation with God and not one of them 83, 999,000 people in that stadium knew that me and God had something going on. What is the greatest gift, that, except for salvation, one of the greatest gifts God's given us, we can have one-on-one -on -one with him and nobody knows what's going on. And guess what? Not even Satan himself. Unless we speak it out, not even Satan himself. He, he doesn't know how much I sit there and worship God and love God, how much I tell him I love him and I adore him, God. I'm so grateful because I sit there in my quiet time. And I do it and I just repeat it over and over and over. And he's there scratching his head and he's going, what's he asking for? What's he want? What, uh, what's he doing down there? What's he doing? Because he has no idea of the relationship that I'm having with my God. And I'm explaining to my God, I need you more. More than yesterday. More than anything. I need you more, Lord. What a gift God's given us. What a gift. It's me and you, Father. It's just me and you. Let's separate ourselves from the world, Lord, and let's just lock ourselves into the room and me and you. Just me and you. Doesn't matter. I don't care. Bills, I don't, sicknesses, whatever, whatever. Leave them all behind and just lock him to God. Lock him to God. Just me and you, God. Yes. Amazing. Verse 19. 
that I sent to the nobles, the rulers and the rest of the people, the work is great and extensive. And we are separated far from one another on the wall. That's exactly what I was talking about and how I used to pray. God, how am I going to do this? I get to this place, God, and I fail again. I can't do this, God. It's too much for me. I can't do it, God. Coming up with a Tina crying out to God. She got to a place. Oh, I can't do it, God. Well, that's how I must be every day of my life. Okay, I'm shocking, God. What have you put up with me, Lord? I can't do this. I'm telling him. This is what this one is talking about here, Nehemiah. Then I said to the neighbors, the rulers and the rest of the people, the work is great. The work in building this wall, the work in building forgiveness back up again is great. The work in building up love, Lord, in my life, Lord, it is so great, Father. It's so great, it's so hard. The work in, that, in building that back up again is hard, is what Nehemiah is saying here. But then he says, and we are separated far from one another on the wall. So what's that say? That says to me, the work is hard, God. And when I fall or when something's going on and it's a difficult time in my, my life, I feel alone. I feel alone, God. I feel as though there's far I'm separated from anyone. I'm in this lonely place, God, where I've, met, muck, muck, where I've, where I've messed up and there's no one around, God, and I'm just getting dragged down, 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 further and further and further. Lord, I feel as though I'm alone working on this wall, trying to build my stuff back, my forgiveness and my love, my things back up again, God. I feel alone. I feel separated. But God has given us this gift. One on one. Nobody knows. Nobody, not even the devil himself. We can talk to God all we want. As long as we're not speaking out like this inside of ourselves, he will never know what's going on. He will never know the true love that I have for my Father because only me and him have that relationship inside this tent, this earthly vessel that he's given to me. I have that with him. I've got to hear, well, that's exactly how I was feeling for a while. What's wrong with me? Why am I like this? I still haven't changed. Only the perfect man could think otherwise. And we know there, were, there has only ever been one of those who lived. And his name is Jesus. There's only one man that could ever think, why am I like this? Why do I get it wrong? And that's Jesus himself. He's the only one. He's the only one that never failed God. That's why God's placed us inside of him. That's why God's given it to him because we're going to fail God at times. We're going to let him down. We're not, we're not failures. We're not failures. We learn from them. We, we, we think that we're going to fail God. But God's going to build us up through that. If we're down here, we'll never realise, if we're up here, sorry, we'll never realise we but when we get to this place down here, that's when we... And we're going to have to go through a few of them in life. Every single one of them, we still go, can still go through them now. Because if you're up here, you're going to get back down here and say, you're on your own again, mate. How about bringing me back into the situation? How about making realising you need me more than anything in this life and you lift yourself back up here? He brings you back up. In verse 20. Whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet, and it rally to us there, to us there, our God will fight for us. Yes. So we know the trumpet, we know that. But what's the sound of the trumpet? It can be anything going on around our lives. What's a warning sign of the trumpet? We know that when Jesus comes, he's going to come with the sound of a trumpet. That's a warning sign that he's coming. So a trumpet's a warning sign. What's the warning sign in our life? What's going on here, God? Oh, man, this warning coming. If I don't move away from that situation, I might walk into there. So when the trumpet sounds around our lives, we need to take attention, pay attention to that trumpet, and we need to move away a bit. And what did it say? 
Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet rally to us, there, our God will fight for us. Instead of us trying to go in and battle it and fight it, that's only going to pull us down more and more and more, and we're going to get down to this lower place in our life, and finally it might take days, we might be gone out there for months, before we realise that I tried to fight it on my own, let's get back over to this place and realise that my God is fighting this for me so I can get back up here and know that I need him. Amen? Nehemiah 5. Verse 8. And I said to them, According to our ability we have redeemed our Jewish brethren, who were sold to the nations, now indeed will you even sell your brethren? Or should they be sold to us? Then they silenced and found nothing to say. So what's happened here? The people were falling behind in their mortgages, they were falling behind in their taxes, and that's because of famine and a drought from over the land, here in this story. And what they were doing, they were putting mortgages back on their land and back on their houses, and they were even borrowing money from the king's taxes so that they could keep alive and survive in them days. So therefore, who owned them was the people that owned the mortgage and the people, the king, who they owed the money to. So this is where the Jews, this is where these Israelites the, from Jerusalem, this is where they're at now. They're, 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 they're under the, this power of someone that they owe something to. Unless you know it. <laughs> then they were silenced and found nothing to say. Then I said, What are you doing? It's not, it, what, are, what you are doing is not good. Should you not walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the nations of our enemies? You see, this Nehemiah is just about to start to enter into a bit of, a bit of um, intercessory for the people. He's telling them. The people that are, that are lord over these people because they owe money. What you are doing is not very good. It's not good. It's not good at all. This is what they, he's standing up and he's sticking up for the people. What you're doing and what you're making these people pay you interest and everything like that, what you're doing is not good. It's not good. He's starting to enter in. So he's, it's not only about me and I, first of all, starting off, I pray to God about himself. Now he's, in, he's entering in to intercession for other people. He's going now, he's praying for himself, and we continually pray for ourselves. But when we get to that spot where we're locked into God, we can pray for other people too. We can bless other people through our prayers. And I said, what are you doing? He's not, got, he's not good. Should you not walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the nations, our enemies? I also, with my brethren, and my servants, this is Ted, and my servants, and, and lending them money and grain, please let us stop this ursery. So I've got these words looked up. I've got to find it. Ursery. The charging of interest of any kind and was considered wrong or was made illegal. I got this out of the out of the Bible dictionary, the old King James Bible dictionary. Like that, and that's what it said. Lending money, lending them money and, and grain. So the nursery was interest, I mean, sorry, interest on what they were lending them. Restore now to them, even this day, their leaves, their vineyards, their olive graves. So listen to what he's saying here. What's being taken away? When we get into this place where we are, we're not, I'm not saying money or nothing, but we get into this place where we think we owe, we owe, we owe, we think we owe the church. Not money, I'm not talking financially, I'm talking within ourselves. We fall, we get down here, we've been up here, we've been thinking we're on top of the mountain, we fall down into this place where God wanted us to get there because God needs us to trust. But when we get down there, the shame of that comes along because we think we owe. We think we are. But listen to the job of the church by Nehemiah. He was praying for himself. 
And then he began to pray and went into where I'm just starting to say where he's going now. He's gone into intercessory for those that are the ones that are filled, the ones that are feeling bad and miserable about themselves. Now he's starting to cry out and try to get justification for them. Not, 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 because he's, not because of anyone's seen or anything like that, but because that's how his heart was. We heard about Uncle Kevin's heart. That's where his heart was. That he's seeing people that were in trouble. His heart was, these are my people. I mentioned that in the first week. How could you want to go and change them if you didn't have a heart for them? His heart was there because they were his people. His fathers come from Jerusalem, so he wanted to go back over to Jerusalem to help, remember in the first week, to help them build up. Build up the wall again. And he said that because I, you have no heritage there. He said to Sam Ballard or someone, because you have no heritage there. He had a heritage there. They were his people. And he, and he started an intercession for them. No, it doesn't say intercession, but he started bargaining. Not bargaining, but he started wanting to get justification for the people, get the people settled their debts and that. He wanted to get them out of the trap that they were in. And we can do it today. We don't need to go and do it financially. We can do it spiritually through our prayers. So we pray for ourselves and we pray for others of what I'm getting at. Restore now to them, even this day, their lands. Now listen to the stuff. Their lands, this is what they mortgage, the things that they got in, put away. Restore now their lands, their debt, their vineyards. Their olive groves, their houses, also a hundred of the a hundred of the money in the grain, the new wine, and the oil that you have charged them. So what she's taken away? If this little fox is ran up on the wall, what's she taken away? He's taken away our land. He's taken away who we are. We are the God made us out of dust and earth. He's taken away who we are. Taken away the land. He's taken, they, they've taken away. We're in debt because we think we're in debt. We're shameful to go and tell anyone we need help or anything like that. We're in this place and it's been taken away. Who we are has been taken away. God has built us up to be someone beautiful. But we're taking that away the same way that Adam fell in the garden. No, back over here. Their leaves, their vineyards. Well, what's vineyards? Grapes. <laughs> What comes off grapes? Well, we took communion out of every morning. When we're talking about vineyards and grapes, we're talking about the blood of Jesus. The blood was taken from their life. Mm -hmm. Hey, what? Mate, he can't take it away because it will always remain there. There is nothing that can weaken the blood of Jesus. No devil in hell can weaken that, but he can take out of my life. Mm -hmm. He can lift out away from me that this blood has been removed. He can let me see and me think and me believe. And then if I think and believe that, what I'm going to have to dig in this hole and I'm going to stay in this hole. I'm going to remain there. But if I think blood, 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 the blood of Jesus, I know well, what I've just done. It's forgiven and washed away. Come on, God. I know I need you. I know I need you. And start climbing back up on top of the mountain again. I know I need you, God. It's washed, it's forgiven, it's gone. As soon as I ask you to forgive me, Father, there's not one devil in hell that, has, that can bow me down before you on my judgment day and bring it up to me again. Because it has been deleted, deleted from any file throughout history what I've done. Deleted, totally deleted. You've got to ask for forgiveness of it first. The olive grave. So what's the olive? <laughs> the olive is the anointing. When we think of olives, we think of the anointing. So what's that taken? What's the devil? What's it taken away? Our anointing off our life. We haven't lost it. Uh, we, he hasn't taken it on me. We've lost it. We've allowed it to be lifted off us. Because he can't do that. This is what we've got to learn. He has no authority whatsoever to do this stuff to us. He has none. We are the authority figure in this picture. Jesus said, therefore, all authority has been given to me. Go. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Just go. And who went? <laughs> Peter. 
Judas, Thomas. But he told them to go. He told them to go. He called them. I think it's Matthew 4 or Luke 4 or something. In Luke 4, he, them people he called. He called them to go and preach the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead. He called them to do that. Judas went and betrayed him to death. But Jesus called him back at the beginning of the gospel to go and do that stuff. But Judas lost it in his mind. He lost up here the belief that Jesus' blood one day was going to cleanse anything that I ever done. He lost that. And what did he do? It got too much to him. He went and hung himself. Because the enemy stole his lead. He stole who he was away from him. God called him as a child. I'm going to make you a child. I'll make you my son soon, Judas. Just hang in there, buddy. And before he even went and hung himself, the blood of Jesus dripped in the garden of Gethsemane. The blood was there. If only he knew the power of that blood, he would have been free from, from sin. He would have been free from that sin that was against him because God meant it to be like that. And if Judas would have repented, he would have been free from it. And God, Jesus still had to go through what he went through because that's how God meant it to be. Not Judas, God meant it to be that way. Judas just needed to come to a place and that's what the enemy steals off us. He gets us down here. Judas got to this place and he remained down there. Instead of saying, oh God, I, said, I, I, just, I just condemned the saviour of the world. Oh Father, forgive me, forgive me. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. He would have got it coming back and it would have lifted him up, but he stayed in that place and he thought the only thing out was go and kill myself. But he could have lifted himself up if he changed the same thought up here as he changed to get him to that place, if he changed it to get him back up to that place. their houses, listen to this one, also a hundredth of the money. All the money. All, everything that the king worm and the locusts and the swarm of locusts has come and stole from us, he was stolen back. A hundred. Not ten percent, not five percent, not one percent, a hundred. He restored back a hundred what was taken. And also a hundredth of the money in the grain, the new wine, and the oil that, have, that you have charged in. Hey, that the enemy has charged against us. What a God he restored it all back to us. What you have. This is the intercession we've got to get. You've got to get in it. Nathan, I Satan is charged against you, brother, and I tell you. God has restored back to you 100 fold every dime that's ever been taken, every cent that's ever been taken from you. That new wine, that blood of Jesus, that new wine that's been taken from you. God has given that back to you. That oil, that anointing on your life, God has given that to you. Not no devil in hell. God has given that to you. And until he says it's gone, no, it won't be gone. It will remain there until he says it's gone. No, I'm telling you, by this word I'm preaching today, it will never be gone. It will never be gone, brother. Stand up and walk out of here today who you are in Christ, who you are in God. And I tell you, that's a mighty warrior. Mighty warrior. He stands there with one hand on the on the thing to mix the mud and put the brick in place and the other one on his sword, Nehemiah when they were building the wall. With one hand, they done construction. They built things in their life. With the other hand, they had it on the word of God. They stood with it on the word of God. Building, but with God in their hand, the word of God there. That was last week or the week before. This is verse 11. No, hang on. I just read. That was the start of verse 11, what I was just going through there. Restore now to them. 
So verse 12, so they said, we will restore it. You hear that? Yeah. Satan, remember this? I forget. Zach, Zachariah, was it? In Zachariah. And they stood there before God, Satan, and, the, and Zachariah. And then someone else was there too, verse 3 of it. And God said to them, to Zechariah, not to Zechariah, but to the other two that were there, God said to them, you take off them filthy rags. Mm -hmm. You take off them filthy rags, and now you put on this cloak. He told Satan himself, he said, you strip him of that rubbish you put in his life. You strip him of it now. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to put this beautiful clean garment. Put it on here. Amen. Here's Satan. He's this beautiful, clean, folded up gun. Now go and place it upon him. Right? He may not, he may have had him for 900 and something years, knowing he was up there, down here. Is he going to dip, dish it out to Satan, who thought he was God and been thrown out of heaven? Is he going to dish it out to him? Gee, Satan, put his cloak on him. <laughs> Mockery. Put him on him there. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. What a God. We will restore it and we require nothing from them. It costs you nothing. God's done it and it costs you nothing. We require nothing from them. We will do as you say. Then I called the priest and required an oath from them and they will do according to this promise. Come here, priest. Make an oath here today that you will do according to this promise. What, Father? Preach your word in truth. Tell them, how, tell the people how it really is instead of them listening to that lie that's been told and spoken for so long. Lord, you want me to make an oath today, Father, that I will tell them the truth, that he has no authority over you any longer. He has no dominion any longer. You have the authority. You have the dominion. The new wine, you have the new anointing. The new will is upon your life. I promise you today, Father, I will tell them for as long as I live. I'll make that oath. Hey? It's amazing. And the lie, the lie of the devil has been over our minds and in our ear, the little foxes. Let's catch the little foxes. Let's get the little whispers that come there. And they build themselves up on the wall and they get, they get to the top of the wall, they get halfway up. And they sit on our shoulder because that's where our ear is. And they start saying, what about this? Oh, you done that today. You done that yesterday. You're no good. Look how you are. Look what you do. Little foxes catch him. Put him onto another one. Put him on fire and send him to the same yeah. thing. Send him out. Yes. Burn it down. You have not because you ask not. James 4.2 You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. John 16.24 Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. How, how big of the promise is that? All you have to do is ask and you will receive. But you do not have because you do not ask. And when you ask, you ask in a miss. I'll read the next one. James 4, 3. You ask and do not receive because you ask a miss. That you may spend it on your pleasures. You're asking for stuff for your own pleasure. But ask for stuff for God's glory. When you ask for God's glory, it's yours. You have it because you, you don't have it because you haven't asked for it. But when you ask for it, it's yours. It's ours. Lord, I need wisdom. Every day. Lord, I need wisdom. It's something we can't never think that we've got too much of. Because when we think we've got too much, we think we're fearing God enough. We don't have to fear him anymore. But when we know we need more wisdom, because this is the beginning of the fear of the Lord. Yeah. We know that I need more reverence for you, Father. 
I need more relevance, Lord. Give me more wisdom. I need to give me understanding of your word. Give me the knowledge, Father, of you, Almighty God, an understanding of you, Father. But give me the wisdom, Lord. Give me the reverence of you, Almighty God. I need you more. Nehemiah 2 19, this is going back. But when Sembalat, the Horonite, the Taobite, the em, Tobiah, the Ammonite, official, and Geshem, the Arab, heard of it, they laughed at us and despised us and said, What is this thing that you are doing? They're laughing right now. You know why? Because they don't think you've got this. They don't think. They'll walk out of there and they won't even walk in what he's telling them to walk in. They won't know who they are, they're laughing. Let's just go on it. This is the devil. You said Balak is the picture of Satan in the, in the, in the fallen angels. They're laughing, thinking that they're going to be able to come and send the foxes back up onto our wall again to bring it crumbling down. Because look what they've built in. They've built and burned out rocks in that. But when God gives you something, they don't care what it is. When God starts building the wall, mate, he's building the wall that will last. But we've just got to believe that he's building the wall that will last. We've got to believe he's